Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Enoch Fredericks. I'm the Associate Director of Marketing and Communications here at Colorado State University Global. Um, I'm pleased to welcome you to CSU Global's Career Success uh, Webinar Series. We have a great program for you today, and I'm excited to begin this afternoon's discussion. But first, I want to just share a little bit about um, CSU Global. You know, first of all, uh, CSU Global was created in, uh, by the CSU system in 2007 as the first independent 100% online state university in the United States. Uh, we are specifically and exclusively designed for um, learning online, for online education. And, um, and really our mission, and we are dedicated to providing not just education, but a return on your investment um, through real world career success. And so that's a big part of our mission is making sure that uh, the education that our students receive really prepares them to be successful in the marketplace. Um, so that's a little bit about CSU Global. Uh, real quickly, just before we uh, get started, just got a few um, housekeeping items that I want to remind you of. Um, number one, at the bottom of your screen, you'll see a Q&A button. At any time during the presentation, please go ahead and submit questions um, that you might have there. And we'll answer as many as we can um, during the Q&A session at the end of the webinar. Um, you'll also see a chat button there. Please, uh, like I said, feel free to introduce yourself. Tell us uh, what you hope to learn today and where you're joining from. You know, we have people joining from all over the place, so let us know that. And just a reminder with the chat button to select all panelists and attendees in the drop down. That way everybody can see your, uh, your question. Um, at the end of today's webinar, you'll see a short survey that'll pop up. Um, we'd love to get your feedback on, um, on what we presented today and on our discussion. So if you can just fill that out, it's a very short, um, but that feedback will be really helpful for us. And then finally, after the webinar um, is over, we'll send each of you a copy of the recording and a short survey along with that. Um, so that we can continue to improve these and so that you can get this information and reference it after the fact. Um, so I want to go ahead and get started here. Um, if we can move to the next slide. Um, I want to introduce to you um, Addison Welsh. She is our Career Navigation Services Manager here at CSU Global. And uh, Addison will be discussing how internships can benefit your career and professional development tips on how to find inter internships and how to determine the right internship for your professional goals. So with that, I will turn the time over to Addison. Thank you very much, Enoch, and thank you all so much for joining us. We're really excited to have you join us and for also to learn some more information about internships. And so to begin, what is an internship? Um, generally, uh, an internship is, used for, is available to students, but they are available to, to anyone. And so generally there are short-term paid or unpaid work assignments that are used so that someone can gain practical work-related experience. And so oftentimes um, recent, or in the past, we've had internships that generally last anywhere between a month to six months. But now as we're seeing more and more employers understand the benefits of internships, we're seeing that sometimes they can last up to a year. And so internships, um, they, like I said, they can last any duration, and there's also different types of internships. And so for instance, this includes domestic internships that are here within the United States. So these can be on site. They can be um, for a nonprofit, for a for-profit company, um, and they can also be virtual. And so within these internships, you can actually complete them from the comfort of your own home, um, or it might be a blended internship where you do some work on site as well as some uh, work remote or virtual. And so honestly, it just depends on the company as to what type of internship you complete and what they feel most comfortable with. There's also international internships for, <clears throat> excuse me, people that want to get more of an international experience or want to go into international business. Um, we also have micro internships available through CSU Global. And this is through a company called Parker Dewey. And so we recently launched these to our students and alumni. And so micro internships are actually small projects that a company may have that they need some assistance with. Uh, it can be anything from helping with recruiting, data entry, social media, uh, it really runs the gamut. And so if you're interested in micro internships, you can visit this website that's right there. And so the, the wonderful thing about these opportunities is that they are paid. 
they can really help you bulk up your resume and get more skills as well as experience so that you can see what, what's offered in the industry. And then finally, the federal government also has a lot of um, internships. They, they offer year-round internships as well as just summer internships. And so we'll be sure to provide you with some resources on how to find those internships as well. And so why complete an internship? Um, I get that question asked a lot. And so obviously you can gain valuable professional experience, which can be really helpful um, on your resume. It can also help you clarify your career path. And what I mean by this is, um, for instance, I, I have a personal story. When I was in my senior year of college, I was just about to finish my bachelor's in political science. And I had assumed that I was going to complete my degree and go to law school and then potentially enter into the world of politics. And so I was completing an internship my final semester at the state legislature here in Colorado. And I remember after the first two weeks, I think, oh my goodness, what have I done? This is not the way I want to go with my career. And so while internships can really show you what you want to do, it's just as important to know what you don't want to do with your career. And so you can look at it from both of those ways. You can also learn and advance your skill set. And so as companies advance so rapidly with the use of technology, with AI and robotics, it's really important to have a strong skill set. So you really want those soft skills, you know, problem solving, critical thinking, creativity, all these sorts of things, oral communication. And so having those internships that are going to help you advance and learn more skills. Internships can also offer you the opportunity to expand your network. And so you can learn from people in the industry and expand from those that you know and, and learn from other people and also, you know, find out trends within the industry from that, from that network and also, you know, what positions are available. You can obviously also increase your knowledge and understanding of the industry because you're actually working within it. Um, internships in some ways are not so different from a job. You're going to learn a lot and you're going to learn more about the industry and, and what to expect. Uh, another thing that you can um, get from internships is understanding a company's culture. And so oftentimes we look at internships that it's a, a benefit for an employer, but look at it as a, as a way to benefit for you too. And so a company, you can step into a company and learn more about their values and what it would be like to work into that company. And so know that having an internship can give you insight that you may not otherwise get just from completing that regular interview process. Um, with an internship, you can also have a, a more competitive edge within the uh, hiring process. And so what that looks like is a, a lot of times I hear from employers that if they have two resumes and one in the, and they're pretty similar in terms of experience and you have one that actually has an internship and the other doesn't, they're more likely to hire the person that has that internship experience. And so it, it definitely gives you a competitive edge in this market that we have today. And then finally, um, an internship may help you transition into a full-time position. And so we actually see this more than not. Um, we've seen this within our own students as well. And so they say about 77% of the time when a student completes an internship or an individual for that matter, um, it, it can transition into a full-time position. So there are so many benefits of an internship. I, I can't tell you how much it can really benefit your career and, and knowing what you want to do within your career path. And so I often get asked, you know, when is the best time to complete an internship? And this is always a tricky question. And so if we look at it within our career path, um, it's really beneficial for people that are launching their career. So let's say, for instance, you know, you're, you're 22 years old or 25 and, and you graduate from college and you don't have a lot of that industry experience. An internship is a great way to get those skills, get that um, experience so that you can put that on your resume. And it also can give you uh, some insight if this is the direction that you want to take your career, as I had mentioned before. Another great reason to complete an internship when you're transitioning a career is because it's going to give you an idea of what to expect within that industry, as well as whether or not you really want to make that transition. Um, we have a lot of students that attend CSU Global that are transitioning into a new career. And so let's say, for instance, you're moving from HR to marketing and, and you're really excited, and then you realize, you know, marketing is not my good fit. And so an internship can really help you see what to expect within those industries. And so whether you're launching your career, transitioning into something new, or even advancing just to get to know different skills and, and what's required in the industry, those are all great, great reasons. So it really depends on where you are and when it best fits your schedule. The other thing is that, you know, when within your academic program is it best to complete an internship? So it, this really depends on you. Um, 
sometimes it can be beneficial to complete an internship at the beginning of your program. And so the nice thing about this is that you're actually going to be able to see what, what it's like to work in the industry and whether or not that career path really, really meets your needs. And so as I think about my experience, it probably would have been more beneficial to complete an internship at the start of my program. And I would have realized that politics wasn't quite for me. Um, but, but that's how it goes. And so it can help you guide you in the, in the career direction that you want to go. Um, completing the internship in the middle of your uh, academic program can also be beneficial because you're actually going to be able to take those concepts and those theories that you've learned within your course and apply them to that internship. And you also generally have a little bit more flexibility within your academic program in order to do this. Um, and then finally, you know, it may be beneficial to complete an internship closer to graduation. This can be helpful if you are potentially going to be transitioning into a full-time role. And so it like I said, you know, it really depends on what up to you, what you want to do and where you are in your career path. You can always reach out to our office, Career Navigation Services, and we can help you identify the best time for you to complete an internship as well. And so how do you choose an internship? So I often tell students that choosing an internship is very much like choosing a job. Um, you know, you, you have to think about your interests, your skills, your own career path. Um, is you consider the internship that is best and meets your needs. And so, for instance, you know, are you curious about an industry or a company and want to learn more? Um, that, that's a great way to do an internship. For instance, let's say I want to work with Amazon, and if I work with Amazon, I can see what that company culture is like, I can see what to expect and, and what the other employees are like. And so that can really help me determine which direction I want to go. And then you also think about your interests. If you're not interested in accounting, it's probably not best to do a, a financially related or accounting type internship. And so think about, you know, what are your passions? What are the things that you really see as important? Because it is so important that we're engaged with our work. And then, you know, what skills do you want to utilize? As I mentioned before, those soft skills are so important in today's world. You know, we are moving at such a fast pace. And so what skills do you want to utilize? You know, do you want to do more oral communication where you're providing presentations? Or are you looking for something more like data analysis uh, and something that you can do in the comfort of your own home? Think about things such as that and, and what skills you want to advance or gain. You know, if there are programs, for instance, let's say you work in IT and you want to learn about a new coding program, an internship can be an excellent introduction into getting those fundamental skills needed to learn that program. And then similar to applying for a job, internship experience requirements are going to be fairly similar. In terms of, you know, there are mostly entry level positions for internships, um, but there are also some that require a little bit more advanced skill set or understanding and knowledge. And so keep those things in mind when it comes to choosing the internship that's best for your career path. And so where do you find those internship opportunities? I get asked this a lot. And so just like your, your job search, you don't only want to do it online. I know that that is most certainly most comfortable, but you really want a multifaceted approach in order to be the most successful. And so I've listed here just a few of the online search engines that we have. Um, these are great sites because internships.com, Indeed, LinkedIn have tens of thousands of opportunities across the United States that are on site as well as virtual. Glassdoor, internshipprograms.com. These are really great search engines because you can often um, filter it by area of your interest or also city or uh, remote or virtual work as well. Um, you can also contact companies directly. And so there's, there's two ways you can approach this. One, if you, if you know the company already, you can ask them, are there projects that you have wanted to complete but simply haven't had the manpower to do so? Because every company has things that they want to complete, but unfortunately they just don't have the time or the, or the employees to do it. And so an internship can be a great way to, to cover that gap. And then another thing is, is oftentimes you can approach a, a company and they may not have an internship program. And so you can provide them. We actually created an employer's guide to developing internships. You can provide this guide to them, and we're happy to help and provide some support as well, and help them on guiding an internship. And in that way, you can really determine what it is that you want to complete during your internship. And then another way is that you should consider your current employer. And so for instance, let's say you work in the accounting department and you want to move to IT. Would your company be willing to allow you to work for three months and maybe 10 hours a week so that you can start to expand your skills. And that's a great benefit for the company as well because you're gonna be increasing your skills and knowledge as well. 
And so, so don't forget about your current employer. And then finally, use your network. Uh, this is one of the most important pieces when it comes to finding an internship or finding a job. And so <clears throat> we oftentimes think, okay, if I'm looking for an IT internship, then I should contact um, any of my friends or colleagues that work in you know, Amazon or Apple or whatever it may be, or Google. But in fact, our network is, is so comprehensive. Um, it, it may be the barista at Starbucks that actually has a brother who works in Apple and, and knows of an internship opportunity available. And so make sure you expand your search to your friends and your family as well as your colleagues and post on LinkedIn looking for an internship. If your company is interested, um, please do reach out. But again, you know, similar to that job search, you want to make sure that you find an internship that best meets your needs, but also that it's not just you sitting in front of your computer finding those opportunities but that you use a, a multifaceted approach. And so next, I, I wanted to highlight just um, academic credit for internships. And so, um, you know, you can earn academic credit for your internship. And, and the really great thing about this is that you can actually apply those theories and concepts that you learn from your courses into your internship. And so here at CSU Global, you actually complete, and for academic credit, you complete your internship while you complete the internship course. Um, and so this can really help you to further understand those concepts and theories and also build a, a stronger relationship with your faculty member as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so um, before we move into this process, I just really want to reiterate um, that each institution is different. And so, you know, make sure you touch base with your student advisor. Um, but here at CSU Global, the way that that process works is that you first contact your student advisor to ensure that you're eligible in terms of having enough space within your academic program to complete the internship. And then you move in and work with our office, specifically with Sue Worden. And so she helps you, provides you with resources in terms of where to find internships, and then helps you with the learning agreement. And so the learning agreement basically highlights the learning outcomes from your internship. And, and largely this is just so that you're not you know, running errands or filling coffee or filing. We really want to make sure that this is a very high level learning experience for you. And then we walk you through the approval process in terms of getting that solidified and then help you register for that class. And so if, again, if you have questions, please be sure to reach out to your student advisor. And then we also have more information for our current students and alumni on Global Connect. Um, so Global Connect is our new career services center that we just offered. Uh, about a month ago. And so if you click on Global Connect and then Career Center Resources on that blue ribbon at the top of your screen, and then click Gain Experience, you'll find a lot of information there. And then next, again, if you need more information, you can reach out directly to internship at csuglobal.edu. If you're not a student with CSU Global but want some more information, please do let us know. We're here to help anyone. We see the value of internships and, and certainly want to help anyone we can. Um, again, please be sure to visit Global Connect. If you click on that Get Experience section, you're going to find some more information. And then if you wanted to check out that employer's guide to internships, or if you want to find a CSU Global intern, um, here's a website here that you can check out and get some more information about that. And so with that, I, I realized that was a very quick and, and brief overview of the internship process. I want to turn it over to our two panelists today. And so let me pull up, give me one moment here. All right, so I'd like to introduce our two guests today who will be answering questions about their experience with internships. And so Ian Thomas is a current CSU Global student who is about to complete his bachelor's degree in marketing. <clears throat> Ian completed an internship during his studies here at CSU Global with his current employer at a wine, and shop, shop, wine shop and bistro. <coughs> The skills that he learned from his courses have been crucial in his professional development and success. Upon graduation, Ian plans to create an educational wine and recipe business. So he'll be, we will have to send us that information, Ian. And then finally, <coughs> excuse me, we've got Dr. Leon Chickering. He is the lead faculty for marketing at CSU Global, and he's been in sales and marketing for over 40 years, working for firms like Xerox and Gartner. He's dedicating to sharing what he's learned about these experience with his students, and he's also a strong advocate of internships and experiential learning. And so with that, thank you both for joining us. Leon, my first question is for you. What are the benefits of completing the internship and internship course as a student is completing their degree? 
Well, thank you, Addison, and I appreciate all the information that you shared with us. I think you covered most of those, so I'm not sure how many I have to add. But the benefits that I see, I just jotted down a few, is to kind of build a portfolio of your experiences. And I think uh, Ian was in the class that I taught. I don't know if that was last year. The terms seem to run together, but make sure that you build on all your experiences because you mentioned LinkedIn, for example. I'm a very big proponent of LinkedIn. They now have a part of their site where you can upload content. So if you've done some work for someone in an internship environment or even in a class setting, you can up that, upload that content. And that makes it available to all the people that you're connected with. And just a real quick pitch for LinkedIn, they have over 600 million subscribers. 600 million worldwide. And so they're in the business of helping us network, which you touched on earlier, with people of like mind. And they're not like a Facebook or Twitter or any of the other social media platforms in that the people that are joining LinkedIn are there for a reason. They either want to increase their job status, they want to get a new job, they want to reach out to colleagues, etc. So I think that's one of the benefits of of getting an internship and think about that when you're when you're at the internship. The other thing is the whole idea of networking. You know, when you're in an, in an internship, you will network with your faculty person, right? Because that, that's who you're in, interface with. You'll network like Ian did with the store owner, with the distributors of the wine, with perhaps the people who supplied the bistro. And he took a class last term. I'm maybe stealing some of his information here, but we just finished a digital marketing course. And there were opportunities in that digital marketing course to talk about, well, one of the things I think we had to do in was, was have some ads for, for something and, and you chose food. And I'm thinking, wait a second, he did have a bistro experience. So he was able to share that information that he got in the internship in the rest of his classes. And if he wants to do this, as a career, which it sounds like he does, then the internship is just a step in that, in that direction. I think another thing for a benefit for a student, how much time do I have? Unlimited? <laughs> how about two more minutes? How's that sound? Okay, <laughs> taking away all the thunder here. The other thing that I saw was feedback. This is an opportunity to get feedback on his skill set as he relates to the, the, internship or whatever you call the person who's offering an internship, but also get feedback from the faculty and maybe other people within not only his enterprise, but within our academic community. Because Jason, Dr. Jason Giese and myself have been real big on internships. We want to get that more out in the forefront of our activities in marketing. And this is a great opportunity to do that. So to have Ian kind of speak to this, that's a benefit to him as a student too. Because actually he can write down on his LinkedIn profile, I was a panelist at CSU Global on internships. So that's just another benefit that he'll have uh, from, from this experience. So that's kind of the thoughts that I had on the internship. I think it, it's just a fantastic program. It's something I wish we had more of. And I see a lot of the participants, I notice names that have been in classes that I've taught. A couple of people from, I think one of them from Durango, Colorado. We all know that's four corners in, in the States. But anyway, I think it, it's a, it's a, I like to see everybody have opportunity and maybe even be a requirement. Absolutely. I know that was fundamental for me and my development as a student as well. And so, Ian, in speaking about development, how has the internship helped you in your professional and career development? Well, I was uh, going to agree with uh, Professor Chickering um, in saying that you did a great job at covering a lot of the main points um, that I felt were one of the most powerful and effective uh, parts about the internship for me. 
um, for it helped me in my career development um, personally because I am trying to go into the wine business and that business as you can imagine is very entrenched the, the players in that industry are very they, they, they know each other they have their own language they, they, they they're pretty much friends and they've been friends for a long time and so getting to know and networking with these individuals um, helped help me understand their day-to-day -day work and their responsibilities. Um, and to see the process of how the wine did and sold, um, you know, was, was very valuable. It was, it was insightful. It, um, it helped me learn a lot about the whole process and understand how I could use it in my future as well. I also noticed um, that um, Third Corner is the name of the wine shop. Um, they used some of the theories that I learned. And I remember you mentioned about when the best time to do your internship was. And I think where I was, was kind of in the middle. And I started learning some general theories on marketing. And um, I got to see those general theories put into practice. And when Later on in more classes, when we whittled down those theories to more specific points, I noticed how actually they're using them in a business. And it just, it, it was kind of like, oh, well that's, I can relate those two ideas together and it, and it made my future classes easier or, or more understandable. Um, like I saw how they, their integrated marketing communications through their website, and email and their brick and mortar so that the c continuity of the brand um, it helped the customers connect with it better so that they, they felt more of a connection with the brand. And, and, and that's more on the re retail side and not on the, the wine side. And so I, I thought that was really, really helpful in, in, in for my career development. Absolutely. Thank you. And then Leon, back to you. <clears throat> can you tell us, and I know that you highlighted this a little bit before, can you tell us though how a faculty member provides the student support during the internship and internship course? Yeah, can I ask Ian a question first? Absolutely. Because this is intriguing. I didn't know how how far you were into your program. Would you think about doing a second internship with a distributor at this point to complement what you did at, at the retail level? I've actually uh, approached, uh, it's funny that you say that, I, I've approached a couple of distributors and how it works normally with the, the wine distribution is that they don't really make much of a salary. They work pretty exclusively on commission. So um, I approached them saying, what do you got to lose for the most part? Um, you know, I mean, if, if I have your portfolio and I have the power to sell it, I approach, you know, a, a section of restaurants, um, you know, and I actually get a sale off and I follow all your, your, your sales protocols and stuff like that, what would you have a problem with it? And a, and a few of them have said that this is, this is a great idea, but uh, going to school full-time, working full-time, being a full-time dad, um, working for no pay was not an option at that time. So, but I have explored that. And once I graduate, I will probably go down that route and then kind of moonlight in the, the service industry. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. So Leon, back to that question. In what ways did you feel like that you supported the student during the internship course and the internship? Well, I think there are a couple things that I wrote down here. One is just the area of feedback. The, the way our, our course was structured is that there were weekly update, so to speak. It's, it's kind of a form, it's kind of like our discussion forms, I guess. What happened to you this week? What happened to you last week? How did that, how did it all meld together? Then we had a midterm, so to speak. Where, where have you come from? What have you achieved? And then we had a, a final. So that was one way of doing it. I did talk to Ian on the phone a couple of times, and I had a chance to talk to the manager. I've forgotten his name at this point. Todd. I thought, what was it? It was Todd, Todd Mulligan. Todd, Todd was very engaging. And I, I, I guess I would applaud Ian for his relationship there because as we know, it's about who you know, not what you know many times. But 
he was very supportive. They were both kind of singing out of the same songbook, so to speak. And I think that brought value, at least from where I was sitting. I, ha I didn't fly down to San Diego to check it out, but I probably could have if I got a cheap Alaska air flight. But, you know, it showed me that there was involvement there. And I think that's one of the big things that we can encourage our students to do is to get involved and to develop a relationship and to really kind of be open. Hey, this is what I'm trying to do. This is where I'm trying to go. Because that person, you know, he may sell the store to you down the line five or 10 years. I, I don't know what your thought process is there, but you can never diminish the advantages of networking. So that's one of the things that I try to always emphasize. I think the other thing is, to try to think out of the box, to try to think of new and different ways to approach the relationship that the student has with the school, with us, and having Ian come in here and speak, I think is a good testimony to the internship program on its own because it shows that he, he has found value in it. And I think that's, and he's shaking his head and I think that's, that says a lot for the program, but also the, the fact that we, if we can provide meaningful feedback to him and the employer, then it's going to be great for our brand, i.e. CSU Global, for his brand, for the employer's brand, and for my, my own personal brand, Leon, and our marketing program here, because we do have one of the best in the, in the United States. So... Absolutely, thank you so much. And then back to you, Ian, we're gonna do a little ping pong here. What was the most rewarding aspect of your internship experience? Again, I, I wrote down two, I hope that's okay. All right, uh, well, um, the two I uh, put down was um, understanding the language and the vernacular that they use um, in the day-to-day -day basis in the wine world and, and making the connections in the networking with those uh, distributors and, and with the customers. Um, like I said, they, the, the wine sales reps, they have their own way of talking. There's, there's, you know, they break down things so that they understand it. Um, but for example, if they want to give a deal and uh, sell more wine, they have something they call the three case drop. Um, and that was if you purchase three cases, then they're going to lower the, the costs on the wine for it. And I thought that was just kind of an interesting um, thing that they use and they use that a lot. Um, so when you're investing in wine, you know, and you want to get the most out of the wine, you want to spend the least amount of money, obviously, um, as a business. Um, and that was something that I thought was um, really, really powerful. Um, and also, um, another thing too was, uh, and you could call this a perk, but the winemakers and the distributors, they want to invite you out to the vineyard and, you know, let you taste wine all day. And a lot of people look at that and say, oh, well, that just sounds like a dream. And it, and it is. Um, it really is a lot of fun, but once you learn the story behind the wine, this is, which is really what they really want to show you, and the process of how they make the wine, it makes it easier to sell to the customers at the end. And the power of stories and, and telling a story behind the wine, um, it, it says a lot for the sale of the wine. And it helps the customer to better connect to the wine too and understand how the wine was made and and. I think those two right there were, were really big, um, really big for me, um, understanding this whole, this whole internship. I, I didn't see the value of that until, you know, I, I actually stood there and talked to the winemaker about his process and his history and why he's doing what he does, his, his passion. Um, that was what was kind of rewarding for me. Excellent. And then Leon, last question for you. Can you tell us, you know, what is your best advice for a student completing an internship? I know you've touched on the importance of networking and really taking time to, in, to consider the feedback that you get from the, from the various avenues, uh, but what else would you consider as the best advice for a student wanting to complete an internship? Yeah, I think Ian hit on it. I think the, the fact that you're gonna have eight weeks of interaction with a business, with an owner, with the suppliers, which is kind of an added benefit for him, to be able to go out to the, to the vineyards and talk to these people, that's, 
that's very valuable. And what I encouraged him to do and other students is catalog that, write it down, maybe even take a video of it if that isn't, I mean, you get into some sticky areas, but with social media now, you could have, you know, some Instagram posts on, I visited the winery today in my internship or something, you know, to, to, to build your brand. Because what I try to tell students is, we're all brands. Addison, you're a brand, I'm a brand, Ian's a brand. And to the extent that we're thinking about building our brand and making it better and the best it can be, then we see these opportunities that will help us in our career, both now and, and in the future. So I encourage students to, to do that, to make sure that they're finding the, those valuable nuggets that will be worthwhile to them later, four or five, six or seven years. I think the other thing is that when I'm encouraging somebody to go into an internship, I, I think that it's valuable for them to put their consultant hats on, if you will, because they can go into an enterprise and they can help that enterprise. And I'm sure Ian did. He gave him some ideas. Todd, was it? Yeah, he gave some ideas that maybe he hadn't thought about before. Because people, especially in small businesses, you get locked up in doing the same way your dad did it, maybe, or whoever you bought it from or whatever. But to the extent that you can help, you add value to that enterprise, which builds your brand, which helps him build his brand, which builds the brand of, of a CSU Global. And then the other, <laughs> the other thing that I think about is a quote that Zig Ziglar had, I don't know if Todd smiling or Ian smiling about Zig Ziglar, one of my favorite guys. He said, you can get everything in life you want if you help enough other people get what they want, right? So that's all about helping other people. And, you know, we're helping the school here by sharing about the internship program. Ian is taking time out. He's had some valuable experiences. And then the last thing I would say is that after, after listening to the program that you put on here, Addison, and Ian's comments, I would encourage students to get into the internship thing early because they may have chances for two, two internships, right? Or they may have a chance for an expansion within like the distributor network in, in wine or they, they went in there in marketing and they found out, oh, I don't like this at all. I, I want to go into accounting or something. And then by the time you get done, because we have a very fast track and all our classes, you know, it's a two year thing. It may be too late and you want to do another one. So that would be the advice I would give. I don't know if that's appropriate for me to give because I'm not in the counseling, but uh, I think that's, a, that's something to really think about. I think that's a really good point. Something I, I wanted to mention earlier was that a lot of times students say, oh, well, I can't gain academic credit because of whatever reason, so I'm not going to do the internship. And I, I really want to reinforce the idea that internships are still incredibly valuable, regardless if you're receiving academic credit. And so if you find that there's not room in your program, I still very much uh, encourage students to complete it because it's still valuable. And even if you're not a student and, and don't gain academic credit, internships are, are a great experience. And so, Ian, my question, my last question for you is, one, um, would you recommend internships to other students? And you know, if so, what advice would you give for them as they complete an internship? Yeah, uh, good question. I think, um, I think all students should attempt to go down the internship route because of even one of the points you made earlier about your political career, you, you went into it and all of a sudden you realize, wait, this isn't for me. I think it's, it's really eye opening because you could think of something in theory and it sounds great on paper, but once you get into practice, it might be a little different. Um, and plus for me, um, halfway through my, my, my studies, it gave me a chance to get off the computer, um, get out and, and you know, get out to a real world situation um, and, and interact with that environment, learn, ask questions, come on as a student. I mean, that's the, about an internship. You're coming on to learn. People understand that about you. So 
you're asking questions all day. I was documenting all the wines I was tasting and the people I was talking to. And it just, it creates a whole wealth of information that you really just can't get anywhere else for the most part. I just, you just, the real world application is just going to be the best portion of it. Um, my second thing here is internships are just a great way to get into an industry and gain that valuable work and the experience in that space um, or exploring a prospective industry. Like um, I could have taken another one and gone down the distributor route. Um, that could be a great second step because that was the part of the internship that I found the most interesting. Um, you can gain the skills and that those skills can follow you through your career. Um, and, you know, you can even document like uh, Leon said to, you know, put those on Instagram or not Instagram, uh, LinkedIn and, and, you know, build a portfolio of your, your successes. And I think that just makes you more marketable in the end. Excellent. Well, thank you both so much for your insight. Uh, we've got a few questions from the audience. And so we're going to just dive into those and, you know, Leon, Ian, the three of us can answer some of those questions. Uh, one of the first questions that I got was about micro internships. And I just wanted to share that website because I thought it would probably be a little bit more beneficial to see that. And so <clears throat> here on my screen, you can see the, the Parker Dewey micro internships website. And so as I mentioned, CSU Global has partnered with Parker Dewey. And so as you can see, um, there are so many different opportunities through here. We get, or excuse me, these are updated probably daily. I'm actually seeing some new ones that I didn't see on here yesterday afternoon. And so for instance, if you, you can see that this one's remote, you can click details and you can learn more about this, uh, about the opportunity as well as payment and how many hours it's going to take. And so as I mentioned, you know, this is a great way to get some experience under your belt. It's great for those who aren't sure about their career path. And, and want to see what it's like to work in a specific industry. And, you know, it's always a, a great way to earn a little extra cash. And so that website is parkerdewey.com. You can also access it through, through Global Connect. And so there is that. And then our next question here, let me pull that one up here, is when is the best, or how far in advance should I start looking for an internship position? And so I... Personally, and, and, and Leon and Ian, if you want to chime in as well, that'd be certainly helpful. I think it, I think it depends on the industry. Um, for instance, right now, marketing, I'm seeing a lot of marketing opportunities. And so you may not have to look for as long for those internship positions. Um, whereas, for instance, HR, it might be a little more difficult to find an internship position. So it depends on the industry. It also depends if you want to do a paid or unpaid position or if you want to do it virtual or if you're location bound. And so it, it really, it's just like applying for a job in some ways. It depends on where you are. I think a, a good strategy is probably to once a week, make sure you check out some different websites, connect with your network and see what opportunities are out there just so that you're aware of, of how long it may take once you're really serious uh, and finding an opportunity. Leon and Ian, Ian do you have any, any thoughts on that? Uh, I think <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, I think uh, it sounded like you covered it. Yeah, just to stay, um, you know, relevant in your industry. Um, fortunately, I was already working where I did my internship, but um, I did do um, a seller rat internship um, before that, unaffiliated with CSU. It was just, um, you know, it was another distributor that came in and said, how would you like to do uh, the, the crush with us this, this year? And you know, that was a good chance to just kind of network and uh, find somebody that, you know, was kind of in my network and, and you know, get a hold of him and clean some wine barrels and, and crush some grapes. And that was that was just a good summer three week experience. Um, this one was paid, um, but it was just, you know, just kind of keeping your ears peeled and, and listening for the opportunity. Yeah, I would add that I don't think it's it's too early ever. Just keep keep your attitude in in a position where you'll be available for the opportunities that come up. I couldn't agree more because you you never know what you may find. Yeah, and you know, then you can schedule around whatever, you know, situation you have, but 
I think what happens, and this happened a lot of, with a lot of students, I encourage them to get on LinkedIn and they say, well, I'm not looking for a job. And so they get on LinkedIn the last week of the, of the year that they're graduating and they're looking for a job. Well, many times that takes a lot of, a lot more activity, a lot more, you know, calling people, setting appointments, putting content on LinkedIn, et cetera. And, and it takes you six months to find a job. So I don't think it's ever too early. I agree. And it's, it's a commitment, isn't it? It takes yeah, time. It's just like yes. when you, when you're finding a job, it's just like having a job. <laughs> and well, so, you know, I'm uh, jump on LinkedIn here, but if you fill out the LinkedIn profile properly, they send you job opportunities. I get, I get a list every, every single week. You can get it every day if you want. Now I've seen people put on their LinkedIn profile, student looking for internship, right? So they go and they look and they come to me and they say, well, do you know anybody who works for Apple? Well, I do. Do you know anybody who works for Amazon? Well, I'm up in the Seattle area. I know a lot of people work for Amazon. And I know the lady who works for this and that. And so it's just a matter of connecting. But if they know, if they see that looking for internship, the potential employer, you know, it says, oh, and they'll, because people will look at you and you won't even know it. <laughs> you know? That's exactly it. Exactly. Yeah. Um, the next question we have is, I'm in a well-paid position, but I'm interested in potentially interning elsewhere as I progress through my master's program. Is it possible to obtain paid internships in alternative industries? Yes. Um, I think that one of the most important things that we see here is that you want to make sure that you highlight the skills that you've gained from your current industry and relate those into the industry that you want to move into. Um, I have a lot of questions about this and, and we can certainly provide some more insight too. And so for whoever asked this question, if you want to reach out to career.center at csuglobal.edu, we can certainly provide some more insight on that. Um, but yes, I, I think one of the, the things is, is that don't be, I guess, just because you're studying marketing doesn't mean that you have to get a marketing internship. It certainly is more valuable if that's the direction that you want to go. But if you're interested in learning IT so that you can help in graphic design or, or whatever it may be, it is absolutely, I think that's more beneficial. And the more information you know, it never hurts and the more experience. Um, I have, I have a thought there, if I might, and, and this is a true story. I had a student who wrote a paper on, have you heard of Otterbox? The company Otterbox, they make, uh, uh, what am I looking for? Cases. Phone cases. Sorry? Phone cases, right? Yeah, they make cases for cell phones, for tablets, all that stuff. So he wrote a he wrote a paper on that and, and I said, have you ever thought about working for them? And because the paper was, you know, one of those great papers. He said, no. So I said, why don't you send it off to him? And it was a marketing plan for Otterbox and see what they think. So he sends it off to him and they sent him back and said, when you get done with your program, reach out to us. We'd love to interview you. So with that in mind, when you're going through a particular program, whether it's accounting, marketing, HR, whatever, think about the kind of firms that you want to work for, the kind of experiences that you'd like to have, and then you're creating content for, I have, I have, this, one, I have this one student, and I, I got tired of reading the papers, and I didn't tell him that, but he wrote a paper on the same firm in the, all these classes I'm teaching, okay? But it was great content because it was from different aspects. Now, if he would take that to the firm, and say, what do you guys think about this? It would be, it'd be it's like a consultant coming with fr free information, right? It's, it's like you cleaning the barrels for, for free, you know? Absolutely, yeah. that's just a different so, way of making your- you know, and, and think about that when you're going through your program, creating content for people who you would like to work for perhaps. And then, then you have it all laid out. And then you could sell it to them if they don't hire you. <laughs> I love it. That's fabulous. Thank you, Leon. Ian, do you have anything you want to add there? I um, just had that happen to me recently last semester. I wrote on Sunbasket I wrote, um, about a, a new product extension that they could have used in um, um, offering wine for their, um, 
their meal packages. Sunbasket does um, meal kit delivery, um, kind of like Blue Apron, um, but I, they do an organic, all natural kind of um, turn to it. I actually had a paper just for my final portfolio project paper, I, I wrote on Sunbasket and um, how they could offer wine at a discounted price because wine is you know, traditionally consumed with meals. And they told me, and I emailed them, or I, I messaged them through Facebook actually, and they said, that's interesting. Please send us the paper over. Um, I was gonna tweak it this week and send it over and see if they're uh, interested in something like that because food and wine just kind of go together. And I, I thought that would be really useful for them. And they said, they, they sent back, they said, we're looking forward to it. So pretty that's, that's a That's a really great insight. I'm actually completing a degree here at CSU Lobo as well, so I should consider that too. Yeah. <laughs> We've yeah. got time for, for one more question here. Um, so I need to find an, inter an unpaid internship and I am wanting to gain experience right away to get my foot in the door. What is the best way to find an unpaid part-time internship? Um, Ian and Leon, I'll let you start with this and then I'll add a couple things and then we'll wrap up. Any thoughts? You wanna take this one, Leah? Yeah, I think the first thing to do is, is figure out what you want to do. Do you want to do something remote? Do you want to do something locally? I, I have a, I play golf. So I have a golf course right close to my house and it's, they don't have a very good social media program in my opinion. So I've been over there talking to the pro and say, Hey, we could provide some students that would help you in the social media program. And then I can go out and find some students to do that. So I think you just need to be aware of what you would like to do and then how much time you want to spend, how much this will, I guess, benefit you long-term in your career and then come up with a plan to say, okay, I'm going to contact the people the closest to me or I want to do a remote one or I want to do whatever. And, you know, that person could reach out to you, I guess, Addison and us, and maybe even Ian for some ideas on, you know, what the first steps are, but you kind of have to have a plan. You just can't be going through the phone book. What, what do you think, Ian? I, I think that's really, really important that you have to find an internship that meets where it meets you where you are. And so again, that's their skills, your interests, your career path. And so I, I think, you know, one of the first thing is, is, is to check, you know, those online search engines, see what's out there, you know, or, or is what you're looking for, is it something that's offered? And if not, then consider companies that you'd be really interested in working with. Reach out to them and ask if they have an internship program. Ask if they'd be willing to help you set up a project or, or anything in that way. And I think that because you're looking for something that's part-time, specifically unpaid, you're, gonna, you're definitely going to open up your, your opportunities there. And so I know that we have some other questions here. If you want to send them to career.center at csuglobal.edu, we will get those wrapped up. I'm sorry that we didn't have enough time. Um, this has been such a wonderful webinar and, and thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, before you go, please take a moment to answer the poll question on your screen. And this concludes our career success webinar service. And, and again, thank you so much for participating. If you have any questions, please reach out to us. We are here to help. And, and thank you, Leon and Ian, for your, for your insights. They're incredibly valuable. Thank you.